second chance just to do again I feel sad broken strings cause you play me like a violin shame on me for all your seven deadly sins had it all but you craved attention drowning me in your own affection put me down just to see me get back up again six feet under and you're ready to give all the pain if I was your This isn't real, now we're over Six feet old, there's nothing left here anyway We used to talk, but now we don't know what to say Now we're just two passive strangers Who tried you like goodbye forever Put me down just to see me get back up again Six feet under and you're ready to give all the pain If I was your new addition, you may
Welcome back to the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena. We're here for a little bit of Boise State Valorant action in the NECC. I am joined tonight by Baratel as always. We've got some crazy action coming up and we have some crazy new stuff that's happened in Valorant since we talked to you guys last. And uh, Baratel, I see that you're wearing black. Can, can you give us a little bit of reason why? Well, as some of you may have known, today is the uh, announcement of us losing something very near and dear to my heart. The Bucky. Rest in peace. Yeah. I, I can't believe. Well, you know what? No. I can believe <laughs> that they've done that. I really can. Because at this point, it was getting a little bit OP. 
and um, I think it was I think it was time. I think it was time. This goes to the naysayers who said that the Bucky was bad. If it's bad, why did it get nerfed? Hmm? Speaking of being bad, I mean, we've kind of had some criticism among some of these agents that we see here on the screen, Killjoy, Viper, and Yoru. Two of these receiving some kind of huge buffs that might make them playable as soon as they hit live. Yeah, I, I got a feeling that I'm going to be stuck in a situation where I'm having to play against a Viper when I really don't want to be <laughs> playing against a Viper because it is going to be absolutely disgusting. Yoru's actually finally, like, viable, which we've been begging for for how long now? Very long time. Yeah. So I'm really excited to see that um, kind of come into play. I don't know exactly what we're going to what we're going to see out of these agents. I don't know when we're going to see them kind of come into play, but I am really excited about this new HRTF function that we're hearing about. Um, I guess functions in HRTF, but I'm really excited about that, you know, actually being able to hear where things are at. Mm -hmm. You don't have to spend several hundred dollars on the Sennheiser headset. They're going to simulate that kind of surround sound in the settings, and I think that's going to be automatic, which is great because, you know, you don't want to give any sort of edge to, to someone who can't afford a, a great headset. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to be nice. This might be the last time we see a, a Bucky, so I'm going to, you know, if I see it, I'll, I'm going to jump for joy probably every time it's pulled out. So I might be doing some jumping jacks over on the stage. <laughs> I would uh, I would love to see that. Um, I think I think I'll be I'll be it'll be a happy sad moment for me um, when it's gone, but. Getting into some of our rules and regulations tonight. And just a reminder of the setup of how the league's running. This is the Valorant NECC League. There is, it's a nine-week series. We have 30-plus teams. It is a best-of-three series. These maps are preset each week, but the home team for each map gets to pick, or the home team, excuse me, in the series gets to pick their side for maps one and three, while the away team gets to pit, pick their side for the second map. Uh, Boise State, both teams right now doing really well. They're both really highly ranked. They're in that champions division. It's always been uh, a pleasure to watch Boise State just kind of do their thing. You know, we've seen both teams now a couple of different times on stream. We've seen both teams take care of business a couple of different times, you know. Mm -hmm. We're getting down towards the end of this, Baratel. We're getting yeah. towards, the, towards the playoffs and hopefully a championship. What are your thoughts on these teams? Yeah, you know, and, and as we kind of see how the brackets emerge so far, we can see that the front runners – and personally witnessing what both UC Davis and Florida Atlantic can do, uh, I think, you know, not only do their numbers speak to them being a combatant, but the way that they play the game is, is going to speak to that as well. And, and the rest of these teams are putting up such a fantastic fight. I think one of the only other teams we haven't seen, we have the pleasure of viewing tonight, is this uh, University of British Columbia, Oka Nagin. Okanagan. We did a featured matchup tonight. So we get to kind of finally get that last puzzle piece, the one that you've been searching for in and outside of the box, and you finally found it in between your couch cushions. <laughs> We're able to put that final puzzle together to figure out whether or not we need to do something else for the rest of the tournament. Yeah, it is going to be really interesting to see Boise State take them on tonight. We've seen a lot of uh, a lot of good Valorant action as we've gone through this season. And as we look at Okanagan, they were a little bit more down towards the bottom of the standings. But as we know, that doesn't really mean anything mm -hmm. because in the NECC Valorant League, anything can happen, really. These teams can come out and, and they can surprise everybody. And we've seen that happen quite a bit this year. Yeah, well, what's to say that they don't have like a, a Viper main on their roster now that things have kind of become more powerful for that agent, the operator? Who knows if they're not going to be able to front run through everyone else in the rest of the bracket. So it's kind of these changes that go through, you know, the normal competitive play from, of course, the, the game developers themselves that end up influencing these tournaments in sometimes a major way. Yeah, you know, and, and that's kind of the fun thing about Valorant. We get to see things change, you know, live and, and, and these, these games do change quite a bit. So... Um, and, it, and you talked about, you know, different mains uh, as, these, as these teams have to adjust. Boise State, you see our roster there on screen. Who knows who's going to be running different agents as we go through the season. So just a quick reminder of our roster. We do have Bandito, which is Mr. Ethan Cobbs. We have Dreammaker, which is Luke Edwards. We have Soja, who is Jack Wilcox. Lycan, who is Blake Ramsey. And Your Hat, who is Seth Banta. And I was talking with Voices last week. And... I'm still annoyed that your hat does not have a hat on in True. his picture because that seems almost only appropriate for him to have a hat on. So 
and he runs a lot of agents that do have hats on too, which is uh. I don't Which think I've good. ever seen him without a hat, so that means he can only stick to agents that continue to have hats. This is true. That, this that's is a requirement. I'm sorry. I, and I like that. I like that a lot. Well, hey, let's get into Doc's keys of the game in Valorant. Watch your corners. Be ready to trade teammates. And don't be afraid to use your utilities. That's something that Boise State is very good at. Let's make sure that they can continue to do that. And that is Doc's keys to the game, which are brought to you by Count. Count's Identity Trust Global Network delivers real-time fraud prevention, account protection, and enables personalized customer experiences for more than 9,000 leading brands. Count.com. Well, Baratel, as we get ready to head into this match against University of British Columbia, Columbia Okanagan. I'm going to have to work on saying that correctly <laughs> every time. And again, this is Boise State and University of British Columbia, Oka British Columbia, Okanagan. This is good practice for me. <laughs> <laughs> what, I what are you looking for out of this Boise State team? You know, what, what are you looking for to see them really take control of this early and, and win this? It depends. <clears throat> As we've seen sometimes in previous generations with other you know, teams that we play in other games, there are these opportunities where we are in a lead of sorts, where we start get to starting to test out new things. Um, with the recent agent. changes to the meta, um, as well as these kind of patch notes, we might actually end up seeing a mix-up between some of these agents, but it doesn't look like it's going to be too tremendously different. In, in fact, I don't think there's any changes from what we've normally seen from this squad at all. So that's kind of the other side of the token, right? You don't want to show any sort of tricks that you have up your hand, and you continue to just do what works. Yeah, and this Boise State team is very good at doing exactly that, doing what works and executing their strategy. Um, this is a very similar setup to what we've seen them run in a lot of games before. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, this might be the last week that we get to see this setup because, you know, like we talked about, there's, there's likely going to be some introductions of some new agents into these lineups. So going into this week, I think we need to just uh, take advantage and use this to remember the great times that we've had on, on these patches, basically. Yeah, uh, I agree. I, I do want to note, though, that with the introduction of this breach, this could kind of do uh, some some damage to uh, the Boise State roster, mainly because of the fact that there are so many walls that aren't really peekable a yeah. as an advantage. But if you have a breach, walls don't matter. They actually make you stronger. Right. Yeah, I agree. I do think that's going to be interesting. I mean, with Boise State, you know, we're, we're seeing a team that right now um, – probably won't see a lot of walls being played again or being played for them but hopefully uh hopefully we won't see that issue come up later on in game as we're on board with your hat here he's going to be pushing up alongside the boise state cypher just some early actions you see those paint shells coming out for ubc as they push into hookah there bandits trying to get a kill with that classic and you see that draft come through for the jet to get away and the the trades do come through there, it looks like. So Boise State and UBC just trading elims early. Trading elims only, but uh, Soldier's is going to be on the back end to pick up this raise as well. A nice classic, probably M1, M1, M2, and going to go ahead and retreat. They didn't really have a nice ease of access here to this point, and I'm surprised that uh, they didn't end up getting any sort of tripwires or anything out. But when it comes down to attack uh, Cypher, it's, it's pretty difficult to use effectively. <laughs> a frenzy pickup on Bandit, though. This is this is kind of the aggressive option we'd like to see. When we see a, a jet, they want to get those early frags. They want to win constant 1v1s and, and out gunplay, even by having a slight advantage with the gun that they chose. Yeah, and that for, for Boise State, that is something that they love to take advantage of. They are such a fast team, and you see the what team a bait. through mid-map Oh, there. my goodness. They completely bait switch over from A, go right back to B. They're going to watch this long tunnel into L, and they also have to keep their backs turned to Hookah. That's exactly why Soldier's going to be here. The blind will come out. It's not going to be dodged, but oh he will actually win no. this out. Ghost will be the fast tap and gun that you want to have in a 1v1. Bandit trying to get a wall bang here, not able to t secure that. And on the backside, they're going to get shot here from every angle. The M2s from the Classic are devastating, and the Recon test here from UBC is perfect. It was such a Giga Brain play to go and to wrap that back, hit a fast TP after the bait, and bring that back towards site. But, I mean, it just didn't really work out. They didn't win the gunfights they needed mm -hmm. to. And, and it really started with Soja losing that gunfight to the breach there in Hookah. He got the flash off. He got the blind off, but I don't think that it really mattered. Mm -hmm. uh, the shots were just too nice. Yeah, and, and it, it kind of suffers when you have a Cypher 
that's the last person you want to have alive because so much utility can be gained both from that cyber cage and those trip wires. You need to make sure that that, you know, your hat, I think, in this instance, because it's, of course, someone wearing a hat, is going to be the one that stays alive later into these rounds. I think it's a, I think Lycan might have actually picked up the cypher for Boise State this time, but I, I, uh. I take your point. I take your point. See Bandit, he's going to be pushing up into showers there. He has that Sheriff, but it looks like Boise State there looking at a full push onto this site. Nothing's come through yet. Now it looks like Soja's going to go down, but the trades do come through. Little omen on omen violence there. The Frenzy does pick up the kill for Boise State. And then you see there's the Spectre. Some of the buys starting to come through. That's the advantage of winning that first round. Nice retreat into the portal for safety. I wonder if they loop around for a recontest. I think they oh, have the supremacy, bangs. especially with that challenge from Showers. I mean, get the ultimate orb, and now Jet is pert near close to getting one more elimination, gets those knives out for the next round. But now they have to wait for, I do believe, Lycan to rotate all the way back here. Dreammaker here, trying to do what they can. Great player when it comes to these kind of cheeky angles. And holding this U-Haul is going to be a great option Standing for him. Ahead. Recon Dark going to go out, but not going to see anything. And we can see these silhouettes, but of course the players cannot. So they have no idea that someone's challenging here from the side of the CT spawn. It's going to be a bomb planted. I wonder if they're going to retreat back to just those safe holding corners. No one in showers, though, right now. Could mean disaster if they were to get flanked out from their own spawn. Challenge from maybe... U-Haul, it's gonna be a raise, peeking things first. There's also Killjoy there, no turrets. There goes the Alarma bot, not gonna do much here. And U-Haul's gonna be a dangerous place, but they're buying so much time, they actually lose out oh. the gunfight to the judge. And that is the verdict, you are guilty and you will be <laughs> sent to your perdition. Can be Dream Maker though, can they make dreams happen? Here comes another sort of recon, but again, pistol versus shotgun, you're generally not gonna win those. And another round going to UBC. Yeah, there's the judge. A nice three-piece for it there. I mean, you're probably going to have to get used to seeing that a lot more. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're, we're, I think we're going to be used to the judge play, and it really is such a good, good weapon. It's so viable, and this round started off so quickly. You know, some opening elims come through. This was such a sweet play here. Um, I believe, was this? Uh, yeah, yeah that boxes. was Bandit there from Showers with a nice wall bang onto the raise for UBC through boxes there, but... Wasn't quite enough for Boise State to take the round, and they do go down 0-2, but now they should have the credits to get a nice buy. Get a nice buy, they shall. Looks like you have your cheap buy here from the Frenzy. A nice uh, finisher, if you will, while having the ultimate band. It's going to go forward with as much of this presence as possible. But I do have to give a, a note of criticism. They had no so much momentum. They, were, they put themselves in a, in a great position to play out the rest of their plan. And then the hiccup was when Lycan went to the teleporter. Kind of left their kind of stronghold on point A to, to be a little bit weaker with one point hold. But Dreammaker here, gonna get a pick off of their own. Recon Dart is gonna be shot out immediately, but that gives a lot of information as to where they are. Here comes some of that breach ability. Moving over to the L, not gonna be able to find out. And then baiting three members, this is perfect. Dreammaker's gonna be see if he can find an exit. Doesn't see anything because of the that uh, sight diminishment. And then of course, no paranoia being committed just yet from either Omen. Spike planted. They're also going to hold this point to see if he can maybe get any sort of retaliation. Ooh. And he actually gets found out. Dropped to 3 HP, but makes a nice flick and a headshot on the Omen. Can't use anything there. And it's now just Sol Silvern? Silvern. Silvern. <laughs> Versus the world. Not going to be able to do much. Not the uh, most aggressive agent here in, in the roster of Valorant, but maybe can get an exit here or two. I think that's going to be critical. You want to save some of that eco because now you were in a situation where Boise State had the full uh. eco in that round, and Boise State takes advantage of it. They do find their first round of the match. Boise State needed that one. You don't want to go down 3-0 because when you lose a full eco or when you lose a full buy round this like Boise flick. State this was is on. This just dirty. Yeah, this was, this was nasty. The shots came through, but it wasn't enough. And that was just a straight 90-degree flick right onto the head there and Great sandwiched in between Bandit with a couple of nice dagger kills as well. That was that was what Fantastic. got the round started for Boise State. Proper. And you got a question, you know, when it comes to having to jump on someone to get them to three HP, how did you not? That's that's got to be on you. That's a my bad, guys. I I missed kind of situation. As someone who's done that a lot, I can tell you it's not fun. It's not fun, <laughs> but it's, it's truthful. Aldrin gonna come out, but here comes the cloud burst to diminish it. 
not be able to see much, but it's so nice to have utility that can permeate through that safely. You have, of course, the owl drone. If you're playing sky, you got the dog totem. It's it's all worth it. Scouting's gonna come out, and here comes. Oh the my blocky. god! I gotta do one jump. Boom! Oh, and it didn't come. It didn't end through. up working, but it was a jump-worthy play, and they're gonna continue to trade out. It's gonna be wow! Just four members instantaneously in the blink of an eye gonna go down. UBC Okanagan gonna struggle to hold this point. And I really like the way that Boise State's been playing this so far. They haven't been, like, hammering their head against the wall saying, we need to get this point, we need to get this point. They're really utilizing the advantages that Bind is able to present to them. Might not be over that yet, though, because Saucy is trying to make some sweet sauce here with their plays. Has, of course, a nice skin there showing off a bit. It's going to be a 1v3, which is a tall request. But Saucy with this gun and with the kit has the ultimate as well. I don't. I don't know that you. I don't. I don't think you invest it unless you, believe you find in yourself. at least one more. Full believe. Yeah. You yeah. go for the one for two, the one ult for two. You have to get this pick off before its timer starts beeping too fast. It's starting to pick up in pace. There's only a couple seconds left, yeah. and he will get found out. But great look, turning to heaven. That's a that's a tough call because, you know, when it comes to game knowledge, Broncos, they are one of the best teams in that. Right. They're able to say if we peek this angle, if we scoop back. We're going to get capitalized on. Let's just hold the angle where I'm protected, force him to come out of cover, and then we go for the 1v2. Yeah, and I think if you're Okanagan, you probably know that. If you've done any homework, you know Boise State is such a smart team. And I think that's probably why we didn't even see a real aggressive push there from Saucy at the end. I mean, Saucy is, does have six elims this game, kind of doing some work, but I don't think that they wanted to get too aggressive because they knew it was pretty unlikely they were going to be able to find a 1v3 just simply because Boise State was going to be so spread. No Sage on this map is always a unique question because these walls can can do so much work in terms of deterring aggression, kind of shepherding an enemy team into a certain location. Even getting yourself you know, kind of uncontested high ground that not a lot of agents can get to offers so many opportunities. And then, of course, the res, which is always such a nice thing to have. Yeah. Yeah, and especially with how Boise State plays so aggressive, you would think that that might be something that they want to continue to look at. And they do run a Sage from time to time. Soldier mm -hmm. will, will kind of switch over to a Sage if they need it. But with how aggressive Boise State is, you would think that they might actually consider doing that a lot. Although it's hard to deny. Soldier can make some ridiculous plays with that Phoenix kit. Gets shot for just a nice chunk of health about... 80 down the pipeline, gonna get shot some more, but gonna miss out. The 1v1's gonna be huge, goes for the charge forward. Tailwind into death from Wallbang headshot. Not gonna be a too good look, but actually gets the kill. And here comes that neural theft. Information's gonna be spread around. It's gonna be a 1v3 situation, but he actually picks up one and one on the other side. It's gonna be two for zero so far. Boise State will suffer their own casualty. But again, in the blink of an eye, the action happens, and now the dust is settling, and it's just silver and versus the world. And that was such a great investment of that neural theft from Lycan, too. I mean, that was just the perfect time for it. They knew that there was an opportunity for them to... Uh, they knew there was an opportunity for them to really just take advantage and, and, and press the gas pedal. I don't understand this question. Who do like here? I, I do like here. I, I like here as well. I do like here, actually. As a side note, I like here. I like the Broncos not picking up a lead here so far in this map as well. I like Bind, if that was the question. I think it's a great map. I think the only map that I now dis dislike to, to great extremes is Split. That's, oh, uh, really? I used to love it because of the ropes, but now as far as a rope map, Icebox has taken my heart, and the Split ice. can go away. I can't stand Icebox. I know. That's I that's probably why I like it so much. Nobody nobody liked the Bucky. Now everyone <laughs> likes the Bucky and it's gone. <laughs> Nobody likes Icebox. That map's going to get nerfed somehow, too. You're just ahead of the trend. I You're either ahead am of ahead of a trend or I'm just a giant troll. Either one. I, 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 I prefer to go with the former. Yeah, I'm Giga Brain. I like that. That's why I'm sitting here talking about the game and not playing. My brain works at extreme speeds. My hands do not replicate that speed at all. Mm, there we go. See the paint shells invested there from Raze to get up into Hookah, but he doesn't find anything on Dream there. So Dream's going to know that there's some push. Oof. There's some presence over here on site. How much he doesn't quite know yet, but it does look like it's going to be a three hit over here on the site from UBC. Um, and it sounds like there's the run it back coming through from Soja as well. And he's going to get found, but there's the information Boise State needs and the Hunter's wow, Fury invested as well. They are going all out for this round, and they're in a 2v4. They may come to regret that here because they've invested a lot of ults. 
Yeah, use a lot of ults, got some information. We always like to see those one for zero trades or one for negative zero, if you will, when it comes to the run it back, but couldn't get those final shots on Killjoy. So they're going to suffer using that to, to no avail. But this is, again, what we like to see. They've been holding these ultimates for a round or two, whereas UBC, yes, they won the round without using those three ultimates, but they've been holding on this for, for a couple rounds now. They could have maybe taken this from a 3-3 three, three to maybe like a, a 4-2 or even more of an advantage if they're using their abilities. Now they have the Royal Flush, though. Yeah, and they really haven't needed them. I mean, any time that you can hang round for round with Boise State, I think that that should be a huge accomplishment morally. I mean, Boise State is such a good team. They're one of the best teams in this, in this league. So... When you can hang round for round and not invest any of your ults, and Boise State is now down to just their omen, that uh, that should be a huge compliment to this UBC team. Yeah, it's uh, They're doing phenomenally well. But I will add a note of thought. If you have an ult and you use it and you pop off, if you, if you have the ult and you haven't used it, those pop-off moments are not as valuable, right? You don't get those ultimate pips as you would normally with the ultimate being expended. So, I mean, if you're confident in yourself as they should be because they're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Boise State right now, I think using the ults to continue to gain even more of an advantage and then continue to frag out, that could be even more detrimental to the Boise State squad. Yeah, that could be true. Well, and it and, and looks like Boise State does have two down there, and we saw it just to start the round. That was Those were the Jet Daggers coming through and finding an Elim just to start the round when there was a peak in mid there. I mean, it was, it was almost instantaneous. So that's a great start for UBC Okanagan. And they've they found another one as well. So now Boise State's in a situation where they have to try and find a way to break into a site down two. I do like the reservation here from UBC as well. They are not giving up either sort of advantage on either A or B. All members are respecting the opportunity for the Boise State left. squad to swing around. Ops are going to be locking down. No one in the air because they are expecting that tailwind and the jump to go through. But no, the dives are going to be located elsewhere towards Hooker. Here's a shot here, and it's going to be one down. But uh, it's a pretty tall order to get the remaining four. It's going to be two versus four as well with not much time left in the bank. They're not going to be able to look to make something happen here unless something like that goes oh, on. But no time to plant. Four seconds are gone. They're just looking for exits. Yeah, and that was a great play there for Boy by Boise State. They realized pretty early on, I think, that that wasn't going to be something that they could do much. And they didn't want to give that op up because it is so deadly in Vanda's hands. When he gets it going, it's nasty. So good decision by them. Not push and find those exits. Now, there is a rare circumstance that is allowed to hold ulti, and that is if you are a jet with a operator. Because <laughs> yeah. that, that gun and the ability to just quickly relocate and get another different peak and long kind of term advantage through the angles that you're able to access through the mobility, you don't really need the knives. Usually they're used as like a uh, I don't have any money situation, <laughs> but well, we'll see how it ends up. Yeah, and, and that exact situation is one you're describing, obviously. That's uh, Boise State puts themselves in a pretty good situation. You see they do have now two ults on the board ready to roll. This is going to be another play into this site. Boise State has Paranoia fallen in love forward. with this site all year. Yeah, they really like this site. There's so many nice angles, and it's such a fat, flashy way to take the advantage here. Paranoia coming out here from the side of UBC, but we met with a spray of bullets. Lycan going to take advantage of U-Haul, and they are going to hold that for as long as possible. Nope, they've given up the advantage. They can almost sense that UBC has retreated and kind of re-attacked this angle from the side of their spawn. Here comes that detainment, and it's going to be a nice deterrent for the Broncos to fire on point. Problem is, they already got the spike down, and now they just need to hold the angle. Yeah, that was that was a very poorly timed ult, in my opinion, because Boise State doesn't have the or Boise State already got the spike down, like you mentioned. Like he actually got that midair. Yeah, that's nice. You oh, can just sit back no. in showers and band it with two huge kills with that op. Oh my goodness, Boise State played that so well. The trades come through. Legit Soja takes down Kurt. That's going to be the round for Boise State, and and that's another ult off the board for UBC. And that Killjoy, which is so irritating to play against and can completely stop a plant on a site, got almost wasted in that round. Yeah, if only a few seconds earlier, I think it would have been a huge ultimate forcing Broncos to maybe re-plan their strategy. And with how well UBC has been holding point B, that might have been where they went to, of course, no avail. But the fact that they were able to sweep in, get a nice angle behind truck, and plant that sucker down, they were just able to hold the angles that they were going to go to anyway because of the detainment. Yeah, and and, and and it showed there with Bandit just in showers. Just 
finding the angles. That was a sweet, sweet shot onto the jet who is in the air there. That was super nice. Wow, manages to dodge around the jet. And you can paranoia the owl? I did not know that. I've never been paranoid by my owl drone. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be a little bit frustrating to play against. I think. Shock dart coming out. The operator's going to lock oh sight goodness. again. And it is a deadly one in the hands of Bandito. And it's going to be another shot here forward. They're going to get the backup. Six HP on Dreammaker. This is when you wish you had a Sage. But it's going to be one versus three. And Thick is going to try and go forward. Doesn't have a lot of utility. Does have something special in their hands, though. Gets a one piece here from L, and it's going to be something that they're spotted out. Here comes another paranoia as well, and oh going to be goodness. instantly taken out by the deadly accuracy that is Bandit, stealing his life away. He is, th this is the best I've seen him play with that op. He's been good. We've seen him do some pretty nice stuff with it, but I mean, he is just absolutely on fire. Yeah. What is, he's got like six or seven now with it, and uh, he, I mean, he's just completely locking down sights. And, and anytime Boise State can push this side, which we haven't seen them do very successfully this year, anytime that we can see them get wins by pushing that side, that's a huge plus for this Broncos team. And if I'm UBC, I'm a little bit worried now because Boise State showed that round a little bit of confidence. Right. And when this team gets confident, that is horrifying. Banda actually going for knives out, even with the operator. Doesn't want to push forward because they don't want to die with it. But if they're confident, run it back will be used for information. They know someone's in U-Haul, but they don't know how many are there. They're just going to push forward. Nine's going to come out as well. Cloudburst and the upwind updraft will be used. Tailwind not exactly expended, and another upwind they have as well. Updraft can be huge here, depending on what angles you want to challenge, but now they've put the, the timer on the mark. Spikes have just been planted, and now it's up to UBC to respond effectively. Here comes the operator going to look for all three heaven. Why are there three heaven, you ask? And I couldn't <laughs> tell you. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering that myself, and I think got a little bit of information there on the Rays as they use the pack to get down into sight, but they know that Rays was going that side. Boise State's got all the information that they need. It's down to a 2v2, two 2v2 two though, and I think it's going to be Soja and Bandit with that op. And Boise State's got the spike planted in a good spot. There's one from Bandit and the wow. second from the Phantom. Huge shots from Bandit to win that round. Got the op back and now Boise State once again starting to get that confidence thing. Just got it rolling a little bit right now. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I apologize if you blinked, but uh, Bandit just expended all <laughs> knives, got an op kill. Drop the op kill for what was it? a phantom picked up the phantom. Yeah. Reloads, gets the two piece, and then picks up the the op immediately and turns tail uh, in like a matter of two seconds, I think. I was really that. confused when when I saw the phantoms come up. I was like, wait, he's he been playing the op the whole phantom. time. Why would he drop that? <laughs> <laughs> no ammo. I don't know. Maybe challenging those short points. I mean, this is why you put Bandit in the position of being the main opera on your team, right? And he has 15 through 10 rounds. Yeah, this is a bit much. He has 15. Holy cow, he is popping off. And he's looking for more. He's pushing up, just seeing if he can get a peek in Hookah here. And it is going to be a three push over there on that site from UBC. There's going to be some info over here on the other side, though. And it's going to be Lycan versus two right now. Three now, it looks like, maybe. No, just two. It's just a turret, I believe. No one's in actual heaven at the moment. Besides that turret, they got sent there just now. Ultimate order being accessed. You know, they did use they they continue to use these ultimates so they can generate them future future post and uh, it's really benefiting them a lot i mean every time that phoenix goes in they're ending up getting a lot of information just like this dream maker trying to get as much information as possible they actually end up getting an elim yeah. on the last hunter theory shot and uh by golly, it's, uh, it's just art. It's just art. 1v2 is not going to go the way of UBC. The pre the predator that is Bandit will go forward with the operator, Remaining. almost like an operator of calculated <laughs> precision. And again, a similar situation to what we've seen already. It's going to be Silver versus the world, and it's, it's a tough call. Ooh. They actually get the off down, so if they win this round, they need to pick this up. He's going to go for the 1, 2, 3. He oh. actually misses out because the wall bank. Hurry, Dream Maker, go the operator. And he does, and it's going to return home to the handy hands. Of, of course, Bandit. Yeah, that was almost horrifying was close. for Boise State. That was almost horrifying. Because if they would have gone down, if they would have got pieced up there and lost that round off of just a very basic flank into the back of sight, right? that would have that would have been a tough spot to be in. And it's crazy that we're, we're not seeing either of these teams doing anything crazy or abnormal or outside the book. They are very much playing these sites by the book. The only kind of weird things we saw were uh, the amount of eagerness from the Broncos to use these teleporters with such frequency. 
I want to see a team just completely scramble an opponent by just continuing to teleport on repeat. I agree. I think that would be really funny. Oh, and there's Mike going showers. down in showers. Saucy's going to be able to hold that. They were able to use one ult on the other side, but again, not able to get a trade elimination. And now quickly the members of the Broncos are going to dwindle three versus five and two ultimates on the board for UBC if they even want to use them. Is it going to be something that they need to use, though? Here comes that Tailwind and the Updraft. But the Teleport, and they completely did it again. They bamboozled UBC main bait and switch here to A-side. But now that they're not able to put things into action, they immediately get taken out. That was a, a pretty good bomb there. Yeah, that was ridiculous. And now it's all it falls to the shoulders of Dream Maker. And unfortunately, he cannot make dreams come true. A Flawless comes through in that last round. So now we go over to pistol round number two. Boise State lost this first pistol round of this game. If UBC can find another pistol round and bring this back to seven six, you have to think Boise State. This is this is a this is another close series. They need to find a way to maybe try and hit the gas and accelerate away if they want to get that confidence to continue to roll. I disagree. You look disagree? At, look at the draft. They now finally have Cipher in the prime position. Defense. This is a time for their ability to contain the momentum from UBC and slow down the pace to what they want. They get to dictate how the rest of the game goes from this point forward. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. You're it is the Broncos, you're though, so you're probably right, and they're just going to go full haul. I mean, it's going to say <laughs> it's, it's, it's chaos versus intelligence. you got to find the right mixture of both. The Broncos team is pretty good at doing both. The kills come they through. They actually there. bait him out to peek <laughs> see the B long. Oh my oh, goodness. Oh, they get the two piece. Huge classic shots from Dream. Absolutely ridiculous to find two and long there. And it looks like the or the Frenzy is going to come out and find Legit Soldier. But Boise State's still in a good spot. Bandit gets some information over here on site. Lycan's just going to be hanging out in back site with that, with that ghost. Just waiting to see if there's a find push. It. He gets the information on Breach. Can he find him? The shoulder jiggle, and it actually works oh. out for the Broncos. Spike will be planted. They have kind of conceded. And they've now swapped over and did the flip-flop. But... Uh, to not much avail. They already have your hat in defense. Shower's going to be where the angle's coming from. Oh, but that tailwind, tailwind coming in clutch. Here comes the peak as well, trying to go through the boxes, just waiting for time. Here comes the paranoia, not going to be able to get much. No, the cloud will be dropped, and they're going to get shot through the entrance. 10 HP, and they will get found out. They'll get the defuse as well. Yeah, your hat just kind of kept tapping the spike there, just trying to bait that jet to peak him coming out of showers, and it just didn't work. Split this defuse here. Good play by the Broncos. Interesting yep. enough, they've changed it. So whoever gets the defuse completed actually gets the pip. It's no longer split between two. Is that in this new patch? It's been a thing for a long time. Oh. Not in the not in today's patch, but previous. I didn't realize that. Yeah, so you don't get to split ulti orbs no more, or ulti I'm, points no more. I'm usually not alive at the end of rounds. <laughs> so I guess that's probably why uh, I hadn't realized that that change had come through. Yeah, I noticed that the other day. I was like, wait, I didn't get an ultimate pip. Why? That's, that's and then, of course, of you know, I was put in my place and found out the information the hard way. <laughs> but a nice kind of come up it's here from the side of the Broncos. Looks like they're going with Stingers, Spectres, and the like in, in terms of trying to combat and beat down. Nice boost forward, but into the waiting arms of a Bucky! Oh, Bucky. <laughs> and can he find another one? It's Bandit. Oh, he can't. So close. Dream Maker does find a trade, though, with that customary LMG that we have to see him run at least once a map. It's got to be the Ares. That's the, that's the value second round buy. Unfortunately, you're going to walk into the waiting arms of, of course, that high capacity LMG, and uh, it's, uh, you're not long for the world this round. It's not a fun oh, situation to be I'm in. I'm not jumping for the judge. I was going to say, I, you, you couldn't see I it because it wasn't on camera. He, he, did, he did like get three quarters of the way up. Okay. I, it was it was, it was was great. I almost launched out of my chair. It, the excitement was real. I could feel it. it almost, it almost, I was so excited I almost got up just because oh. I, I'm happy to see the Bucky in the map still. You got to celebrate it while it's still here, you know, because it'll soon be gone. And that's just a lesson for life. But it's gone but never forgotten. Time is a minuscule thing. <laughs> Not the philosophical or anything. Yeah, I was going to say, this is turning into a <laughs> philosophical stream, and we're actually watching some Valorant. <laughs> Which can be philosophical if you're playing, of course, Astra, but eh, mm. whatever. Mm. Nice blind disorient here from the side of this breach. And we haven't really seen the difference in the comps really matter much uh, for the side of UBC. They're not getting a lot of value out of the Killjoy. Definitely not getting as much value as they'd want out of the breach. If only uh, the raise was popping off as much as they would like. 
Well, and Ray's had her ult for like that entire first half, and I don't think we yeah. saw this. We saw the showstopper you like want at pe all. People go for the flashy. I gotta get the highlight play. But you just gotta use it. It's just another way of damage. Yeah, and 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 really, I mean, you can find. You can almost always find one here. You see, your hat's just kind of shouldering these boxes into showers. With like eight HP, by the way. Oh, oh my goodness! There's the aim lab practice coming through for <laughs> Bandit. Oh my gosh! The the sheriff shots are ridiculous. Four HP, He's gonna get taken out because mm. he just gets the oriented, but he was trying to put out as much damage as possible. Turns it into a four v four. Shock dart will be released. Does the tailwind <laughs> into the wall? Goes for the headshot. I didn't know the sheriff was also an operator, but eh, who knew? I mean, I'm not surprised to see Bandit being the one that wants to run that there. And looks like High Hands is going to come out from Legit Soldier here, trying to see if he can block off showers here. The the judge is in the waiting arms of that cypher cage. That would be a not very fun thing to walk into. Bye bye. There goes Great one. Shots. Another one for one trade though. And UBC has the spike planted. They don't need to commit to this, but they will and give a huge stamp of approval to the Broncos defense. They didn't need to peek at all. They yeah, had the spike planted. It wasn't even being defused. The bait was enough to again wiggle them out of room. And it's just a mind game situation at this point. Yeah, Boise State's done that a couple of times. They use that fake defuse so well, just tapping Spike, just trying to get those baits out. This right here was absolutely ludicrous. The shots from, I, I don't know if it's going to show it. Yeah, right here. The shots right there, Bye. that Bye. is obscene. And a whilst under fire in the second point. But if instead, a little bit of map awareness criticism, they didn't kind of tailwind into the wall. I think they would have been out. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You got to you got to know where you're at there. But I, it, we can't take away from from the actual Elon. But I think you're right. I think you're right. The uh, the tailwind A was very poorly small, placed. Almost nitpicky criticism, of <laughs> course, at this point. But don't jump into walls. God, That's small, nobody, small nobody's criticism. perfect, is what they say. You saw you saw Soja there. He did throw that blind down long there, trying to see if he can bait anyone out, pushing into that site. See if he can get a nice little challenge. He has that Vandal in hand, but he couldn't find anything. This is a lot slower round. Again, that's something wow. that we've seen. This pace has slowed significantly on the pace of UBC this half. Yeah, it's almost like, look at how conservative they are spread across the map. I mean, this almost seems like they've tried to do a mental reset mid-round, and this could end up proving pretty successful for them. They haven't put the, the Broncos at ease to say, oh, they're all here. We don't have to worry about other angles. They're challenging, I think, every angle. Yeah, I think you're right. And and Boise State so has the gun skill to be fine with that. I mean, Boise, they, they love to get aggressive and create chaos. But at the same time, Boise State's good enough to just sit back and say, OK, mm -hmm. you 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 push us. It's the it's the same old story we see time and time again. It's the 40 second and then we go kind of thing where UBC is kind of following the, the predetermined path to success. You wait for the four to, final 40 seconds. Unfortunately, it's uh, against a team that's tried and true against the strat oh. and will completely oh dismantle my. you time and time again. Shots across. That tailwind didn't miss. And the <laughs> pistol to show off. That's another sheriff. And he's on duty. You're going to jail. Put in the pokey tonight. And again, it's because these this Broncos squad has specifically trained against this 40-second strat, right? This is something that's completely widely known in the professional scene. You wait for 40 seconds. It's enough time to kind of make things scatter, and you try to utilize that minimal amount of time to gain an advantage. It ain't going to work against the Broncos. I'm still trying to figure out how Bandit knew exactly where he was to find the headshot through the smoke and then, and then find a headshot. I mean, I guess it was kind of on default. So he kind of knew the general idea, but I mean, it was two shots, two headshots. That was insane. Sometimes you got to. Knives are available as well as it looks like the Hunter's Fury, which despite what other silvers wish they could do, they are uh, in the great hands. And this is where it's going to come out. Information will be gathered. Not going to use the other two charges just yet because they did, we're not sure where to land them. Usually we see at least one or two eliminations going by the Silva ult, but not the case yet. Spike will be planted on the other side of the truck. They do not trust the cage just yet, and information will be given from Lycan. Here comes a lot of information, though, and a lot of damage as well. They destroyed Packer that kill lockdown, Jordan. too. Yeah, the detainment is something you can destroy if you can find where it's deployed. Surprise, it was deployed in such a uh, exposed area, but a two versus two will be the final kind of count before things happen. Oh my goodness. And yet again, the sheriff is in town. He's riding his horse forward. He doesn't even need the assist. He's got his deputy right here, and that's going to be another round of Boise State. 
and I love the confidence from Bandit to just say, "All right, uh, yep. this is out of this is out of ammo." Plick. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ego trail here with the sheriff, and I'm probably gonna one tap Whoa. you because I know where to aim. And uh, I, is that the? Uh, this has got to be for Dreammaker, right? Coming out? This has to be for Dreammaker. Please. Dreammaker yes. wants it, but Please it doesn't give look it to like me. Bandit wants to give it to <laughs> him. <laughs> just give him his gun. This is actually his gun. Right? Yeah, and they end up there's just a trade. There we go. There's the trade. He wanted to go get some water or something, I'm sure. R yeah, that uh that was pretty funny the uh just it was it was almost, I I want to believe that he wasn't trolling him there, <laughs> but I part of me thinks that maybe he was. Bandit was getting a, a fresh respawn actually. Oh, there yeah. we go. Mm -hmm. There we go. He was shaking up the bottle. He's got to shake up the bottle. You got to get that spread out so you get the nice flavor every sip. Well, speaking of spread out, it doesn't <laughs> look like that's going to be the play here for Boise or for um, UBC as much. There's a little bit more of a push over towards A. You do see there's going to be one mid and or the excuse me, there's three B, one mid, and they're wrapping this back over towards B. So this is going to be a very much more contained push, something that we haven't seen out of them nearly as much when they're on offense this side. Nice, and they're actually going to pick up an elimination, finding Dreammaker with his patented gun and actually winning out the gunfight. Not something we often see with how powerful that Odin can be. Six-legged horse and everything. <laughs> Not going to be enough. Lycan will pick up one in response, giving it a nice five or four versus four opportunity. Ooh. Instant turn, though, from Kurt, and he's going to be able to pick up another one. This is where the plays are going to happen, though. They've conceded to go to the other point, and he's actually going to oh. dash with no vision or awareness. Bandit, how do you keep getting away with this? I'll never know. <laughs> Knives are out, and it's a jet v. Jet. Oh, come on. Knife battle. Melee only. Please. Paranoia. Here comes the clouds. Double clouds as well. Going to be able to dash forward. He does have full knives, though. Just goes for the one, two, three, four, five click. We'll have to see. Looks like they're going to stick with maybe that phantom. Oh, that's the a vandal full could invest. be huge. Oh, that is full investing here. Clouds are everywhere. No one can see anything. And it's looking like UBC wants to be the proactive one. But in the midst is that hooded figure. Bandit will go behind. And your hat will pick up the one. No Jet V Jet today. And Boise State win the map. Yeah, Boise State really did take care of business. And that was. Uh, that was pretty impressive from them. They they did what they needed to do. And hey, don't forget, you guys, there is the eSports Tower. Score pro advice at eSportTower.com. Improve your Valorant game sense. Improve your team play. Improve your performance under pressure. You'll get matched up with great players and professional coaches to help you rake up. Check them out at eSportsTower.com. Boise State could be some coaches over there at eSports Tower. The way they played that, it was clinical. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely clinical going through there. They, they just, they played that map in so many different ways and they let UBC just kind of do whatever they wanted. And yeah. Boise State just countered it every mm -hmm. single time. Yeah, and it's, it's just kind of the rhyme and the way that uh, these Broncos squads kind of, uh, you know, I, I say it all the time. There is a, a structured plan here. It's the ability to adapt, understand, and overcome. And uh, the way that the first couple rounds went, that was that kind of adaptation process, learning exactly how far your opponent can strike. Similar to that of boxing or mixed martial arts, both combatants kind of mm -hmm. bump fists. It's as much as a sign of respect as it is to see how long their strike distance is. And this happens with every Boise State squad. Yeah, they do just kind of play it. Play it slow, feel them out. I like mm -hmm. that analogy of kind of like a fighter. I think that's probably the best way to do it because Boise State, they really do play slow, and then it's just like, what are they going to do? Are they going to go out and just be chaotic and just throw a bunch of haymakers and try mm -hmm. and find you early, get a huge lead, or are they just going to play it slow and smart? And this time Boise State played it slow and smart, but it helps when you have someone like Bandit having – I think he, he was breaching 30. I think it had to be somewhere around 30 towards the end. Absolutely. And that's the thing, though, right? Drafting the jet, drafting you know the the Reina into Bandit's hands is such a, a it's a match made in heaven. And I think it's just up to UBC to identify what draft they need to do because as we kind of criticized, that breach didn't do much. I mean, no. he caused some occasional disruption here and there, didn't do anything. The Killjoy's detainment fields were were lackluster. We didn't see any nano swarms nope. doing much of anything. So I think a mix-up in the draft phase could be huge for UBC because we can clearly see they can win some rounds. Yeah, they, they showed the ability to hang with Boise State early, but we're going to throw it to a quick break. We're going to see if UBC <sighs> can find a way to win some of those rounds. I know, I know, More I'm buckies, sad please. too. More buckies, please. More buckies, please. I know, I'm hoping for it too, but we'll have to wait until after the break to see if we see more buckies. We'll catch you guys in just a second.
are such a fast team, and you see the what team a bait. through mid-map Oh there. my goodness. They completely bait switch over from A, go right back to B. They're going to watch this long tunnel into L. And they're down into sight, but they know that Rays was going that side. Boise State's got all the information that they need. It's down to a 2v2, v though, and I think it's going to be Soja and Bandit with that op. And Boise State's got the spike plant in a good spot. There's one from Bandit and the wow. second from the Phantom. Huge shots from Bandit to win that round. <laughs> and can he find another one? It's Bandit. Oh, he can't. So close. Dream Maker does find a trade, though, with that customary LMG that we have to see him run at least once a map. It's got to be the Aries. That's the, that's the value second round buy. Unfortunately, you're going to walk into the waiting arms of, of course, that high capacity LMG, and uh, it's, uh, you're not long for the... <laughs> Please. Dream yes. Maker wants it, but Please it doesn't give it look to like me. Bandit wants to give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Just give him his gun. This is actually his gun, right? Uh, both. <laughs> Welcome back to the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena. We're here for Boise State Valor and it is the NECC Collegiate League. Fairtel and I were just laughing at that recap of the um, fantastic begging, begging, begging for the Odin there. And... Uh, Bandit didn't want to give him to him. You guys was, can't do that to me. Funny. Make me laugh on the laugh that I already laughed at. Come on. I'm trying to be serious here. That was pretty funny, though. <laughs> I looked at him and I said, I couldn't tell if you were laughing in the recap <laughs> or if you were laughing live. And he said, both. I'm doing both. I, I usually laugh at myself because my laugh is pretty laughable. No, it was that. That was awesome. That was we love to see some fun like that from this Boise State team when they're doing these kind of things. They are just absolutely flying. And that's always great to see. Well, like you can already tell. Baratel is joining me tonight. If you tuned in a little bit late, Boise State is taking on UBC Okanagan. I got it right nice. this time, I think. It took some practice, but we got there. They, Boise State is up 1-0 to zero already in this, uh, in this series. They took care of business in map one. I mm -hmm. think they won, what, 13-5, to five, something like that? Was that the 13 final map 13-5, absolutely correct. So that was... Uh, that was a pretty nice situation for Boise State to be in. But, you know, we talked about going into break. There's always some different specialists and stuff. So you never know what the operator setup is going to be for Okanagan if they want to switch it up because uh, we saw some pretty ineffective stuff there. Yeah, and, and it's interesting, too, because not only is that going to be a huge factor in what changes, uh, but, of course, with the tournament rules, the maps are already predetermined. And we've historically seen Ascent. We, we've seen... Haven, and we've seen Split in addition to the Bind. Unfortunately, no Icebox that we've seen competitively, at least that I can remember. Not unfortunately. So, uh, you know, that's another another tear <laughs> down the face. The Bucky's gone, and the Icebox will never be seen. That's probably where they're sending the, the Bucky is to the Icebox. Oh, that, you know what? It can go there for all I care. You <laughs> and I have some serious disagreements about Icebox. That is for sure. Well, hey, just a reminder of our rules tonight. This is the Valorant NECC League. It is a nine-week series with 30-plus teams. It is best of three in every match. The maps are preset each week, and the home team picks their starting side for maps one and three, and the away team picks their starting side for map two. Both Boise State teams that we have are in the top division. They're both highly ranked. They're both doing fantastically this year, as you can see. We are taking on UBC Okanagan tonight. So another champions matchup. This is Boise State 1 versus UBC Okanagan. And Boise State is up 1-0. Boise State 1 has only lost one time this year. Mm -hmm. They are uh, they're doing fantastically. And as you put it, this is kind of one of those final pieces to the puzzle to really get a clear picture of what is this champions division going to look like going into playoffs. Yeah, and uh, we don't typically see here on broadcast a lot of information for the challengers or emergents, but I wanted to check in the other day on our oh, good old friends, Dominguez Hills, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of good teams in those divisions as well, so those are, of course, not ones that we can count out early yet either. Oh, and, and it, it's truly insane how anything can happen when you get into a tournament setting where you're having to play all sorts of teams that are hungry. You've got a target on your back because you're up in that champions division. Anything can happen in Valorant. I mean, when it all comes down to, you know, one clicking, basically, anything can happen. You, you never know. And if a team has a strat that you haven't seen before going into the tournament, something cheeky, you know, those just kind of different plays that you're not used to, different play styles, crazy stuff happens. Mm -hmm. And it's all about adaptation, right? As, of course, these patches emerge, you know, the ones that we were talking about earlier in the broadcast, they can change everything up. 
Yeah, they really can, and it is interesting as we go into a new patch. But hey, just a reminder of our lineups tonight for your Boise State Broncos. We do have Bandito, Ethan Cobbs, Dreammaker Luke Edwards, Soldier Jack Wilcox, Lycan, Blake Ramsey, and your hat, Seth Banta. We saw an absolutely ridiculous performance from Mr. Bandit Ethan Cobb in that last map. I mean, we talked about him probably having 30. The operator was just disgusting in his hands. He was making everything happen. Going into the second map, do, do you think we're going to see that kind of a performance from him again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe not with certainty, of course, and of course I jest as well. But again, the, the way that the team is kind of formulated around him being the point man uh, for the aggression, him making those wonderful trades, him being the main force of engagement, and then the operator and agent choice between, you know, if it's not if it's not the jet, it's the Reina. If it's not the Reina, it's the Ray. Something crazy, something that can continue to be uh, kind of the access point for success. So uh, yes, I think that that's kind of the plan. That's the formula. Is this this fantastic player, our bandits, continuing to push forward and, and be the lead in charge? Kind of like the point of the phalanx, if you will. Mm. And that with, with a phalanx as well, I mean, every point of that phalanx is important because at the moment that there's a, a weak side, it's going to crumble. So every member of this Bronco squad doing so much work. It, it took me a second to comprehend what you were going for there. You, it went over my head for a second, but, but I got it there. Yeah. It, it just took me a moment. I think it was patented by the Romans, if I'm not mistaken. The good old phalanx back in the good old, well, I wouldn't say good old war days, but just war days in general. And this is, look, we were seeing the swap right now. They picked up the Sage. They also now have a raise. And in addition to that, they got the Reina with Bandit being the one in the in the hands, the driver's seat of that. This is going to be a spicy one. I think I think this is kind of Boise State's standard, if I remember correctly. For the split? Yeah, split. This we the see, map. I think split might be the only time that we see Boise State pull out a sage. I don't. I don't know if there's any other maps that we've seen this year where they really are, that they really have a sage. And I think that's kind of legit soldier's job to kind of flex in between running that phoenix on pretty much everything else and then running that sage here on split. I gotta tell you, I've been watching some videos on sage, and I think that now after watching that, she should be part of every team. The, I wouldn't even say crazy things you can do with the walls. The absolutely ludicrous and probably unacceptable things that you can do with the walls make it a mainstay for this agent. Yeah, you, you can do some pretty nasty things. Insane. Just Looks like an entire A rush over to ramps, pushing up to ropes, not gonna be able to find anything, shots everywhere, but they will win out and Bandit will take that trade easily because of course they got the healing on their side. Another shot here from your hat. He'll be in a 1v2 situation and he'll actually get the trade one for one. The rest of the squad that's on that point will be decimated and the retreat will be given to no one. They're gonna have to fight their way in and they can't. It's just gonna be Dream Maker versus two. And that all happened in like two seconds. Yeah, that was crazy. Everyone was just going down left and right. Lycan actually did find one, but then the uh, the bot from the Rays came through and got the got the after death trade. It's fantastic play. And then you see a pack's gonna come out there from Dreammaker, just try and find some damage oh on the breach, and goodness. it couldn't happen. The right clicks came through, and then the frenzy got picked up. Tough. You got to go for that. You know, you're kind of split between two different choices. They baited that they were looking one way by going towards airport, but they didn't end up going that way. And then, of course, the A, a main is just the access point. And finally, we see kind of this breach using both the, the blind, the flash, the flash there, and as well as that kind of disorientation to, to really kind of make Boise State stumble on their ground. Yeah, that was probably the flipping most the script. <laughs> now yeah, was going say, to that was the most effective we've seen him this entire series, I think. Yeah. A B rush, the wall will cut off most of this opportunity for mid, but it gives a great blast point for the side of this raise. They do not hear footsteps, but they might soon. Here comes a blast from their own side. UBC uh, will be going forward with this, and they actually get this. That is a Bucky! Woo! Another Bucky! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and they will be used to great effect on both sides. Spectre will be given a large opportunity for somewhat mid to long range combat as opposed to that Bucky. But now, as the dust is settled, it's three versus three, two in heaven, and there are three or two on point as well. Using ropes, 
Pulling out the Bucky of their own. I've already jumped up for that one, so don't call me countable for this. <laughs> and a 2v2 with the health bars being favored for, it looks like neither side. They're dead even. Buffy could be huge here if you peek this angle too short. Could be too much for you to contest. And it actually looks like Thick will actually get the 1v1. Oh. He actually gets a headshot as well. The Bucky will not be the uh, supreme gun in this instance. And a quick 2-0 will go over to UBC. I mean, that's kind of how it started last time as well. But, I mean, I, I was wondering, you know, Bandit was getting so aggressive with that operator. I mean, with that sheriff that he has that he basically runs like an operator. Right. <laughs> it's hard to distinguish the two because they're both so effective. When, when, when he's just hitting headshots left and right, it kind of runs like it. But he did get aggressive with it. He had no other choice in that 2v2. Boise State, though, they're going to be on a full buy now. They have the opportunity to get what they need, try and balance this back out and find one. If you're, if you're UBC, if you can find a way to win this third round, that's when it starts to get a little hairy. Yeah, this is a, the 3-0 opportunity that could go very much in their way. And yes, they went for a full buy in terms of equipment, but uh, unfortunately for Cypher, he didn't have anything besides just the camera. Mm. That's tough. You Doesn't need it. Apparently that. gets a headshot here on Thick, and that's going to be one member down. The rest of these angles can continue to be held at a long-term advantage. Uh, so long as no one's got a bucket here they'd want to push forward with. <laughs> I love I, I love how you're able to just – any situation is, is, is bucket viable. Bucket recommended absolutely every time. <laughs> <laughs> that's – that's just a fantastic thing. Well, and not we, anymore. We are going to miss that. So, yeah. So it's, it's sad. <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> Looks We're like the uh, the members of UBC uh, are considering going through mid. And I, at that point, they can kind of dictate how they want to go from that point forward. Killjoy still alive. Line will come through. Here comes. Come oh, my. Okay. Okay. I thought for at least one second, somehow, a stray pellet had went to the side of that judge shot. But, uh, nope, it's just the entire team knowing that they are only going to come through heaven onto the side of that B point and that immediate punish of such. Well, I, I just had visions of of the verdict coming through, and it was going to be three judge shots <laughs> and three elims just in right quick succession, and I was about to lose my mind because that would have been absolutely ridiculous. Again, we see the judge living up to its full potential and just being just yeah, such a menace to play against. Guys, I hate to say it, but you're going to have to get used to seeing that gun a lot more, unfortunately. It's going to be very, very triggering. Nice boost. Wow, oh, and the into shots. the waiting arms of a Vandal. That could have been huge if they were able to get the grenade down, but I like to play having a little bit of fun with it, sure, but maybe a little bit too early in the map to do so. I love the confidence, though. I love the confidence. I think it was pretty cool. People. Yeah. It, was, it got style points for sure. He was hoping we were going to be doing a top five at the end, and he wanted to be on it. I mean, that could be top five, maybe fails. Mm, probably. It would have <laughs> been, hey, if it would have came off, though. That's the thing. High risk, high reward. That's always the question. See, Bandit is going to be up just kind of watching this heaven push over here on A side. Excuse me, onto the normal A, not on heaven. And he's going to get some shots off with that Vandal, but it's not going to find oh. anything. And actually, Saucy's going to get the trade out on him. So there's Bandit down. No ability for him to get his overheal off because there was no elims found. Boise State down to a 3v5. Wow, Your hat with another the great one. Tracer shots with the, with the Phantom. Two of them, actually. He almost finds a third, but he gets traded out in Boise State down just to legit Soja versus three. He finds one. Great shots from the Phantom. The headshots come through. They know where he is now, but... Spikes down. Yeah, is he going to have an opportunity to defend this plant? He sees that it probably got picked up. He probably got that info, but... He's gotta still got to find a way down. to get it stopped, and the spike is going to be planted now. And yeah, we can see kind of with this red kind of cone coming on the minimap there at the top left, exactly where Okanagan is looking right now. And it looks like they don't have a lot of spies on the market point here from airport. And they're going to be able to push forward. Here comes that swarm. It's going to be marked vulnerable, so they're going to take a bit more damage here. But they're going to be looped around. They might have to go for the fake contest with the defuse. They're going to be pinched from both angles, and unfortunately will fall. And now, again, now, it looks like Kurt's kind of figured out what they want to do in these games. Has one of the earliest ultimates here for his team. Let's see if he can utilize it, though. I mean, sure. really, he hasn't done anything with it this entire series. I mean, it's for like the second time he's got it, though, to be honest. That, that is true, because he hasn't, he hasn't done anything yeah. this entire time. Very sad. But what can you do? But let's see. I think another big thing that we're going to start to see now, we talked about it on the last map. Okanagan... Again, is up to four ults. 
And it's going to be interesting, you know, do they actually use them or do they just continue to save I heard them? a get out of my way. That's an immediate sign that something wants to be happening here on the other side. Could have been a thrifty kind of uh, opportunity. Don't want to spend much money. You have the knives already. So might as well commit them. And the pushing themselves up to a high echelon could be a, a really good place to do so. Some of these uh, agents can get themselves in positions that are not normal for other agents to be experienced. So you gotta you gotta look at every oh, angle just is. like that. Here goes the updraft and they're immediately able to capitalize. That's one man down and that's kind of a, a great pick here for the side of UBC because oh. that's the top frag from last map. Your hat almost picked up a second there. Those shots were nice. I he he had an opportunity to find two there and I think he got some shots in but he couldn't quite find it. So the trades come through but that was uh that was the ult that got the find there on the side of Okanagan and Jet's down for them now, so it's down to that three v four. I don't know that Jet really had a gun to drop either because she did pop that she ult dives, so yeah. quickly. That's the risk that you run. Again, a lot of these plays, you want to go for two types of plays: high risk, high reward. You have confidence in yourself to win out on those, or ones with less calculated left. risk. And it's hard, it's hard to assume risk when you, you don't have information. So that's why, you know, a lot of the time you see these teams drafting the double information gatherers with the Cypher and the Sova, but not, not an opportunity. Here comes the meeting of the minds, and it's going to be Lycan picking up a two-piece. One, one member remaining. That's a spike carrier down, and it does look like uh, Thick is trying to scramble to get himself to find where this is at. And not going to go for it. No time in the bank. Going to look for exit eliminations instead. Yeah, the smart play there. You're never going to get in a situation where you can find a... Uh, Find a 1v4 probably, especially when you're not in a situation where you have an ult that you can use to really find another elim. He was just playing for that exit elim because he is only one off of his teleport. So that was probably, that. well not probably, that was a smart play. And Okanagan still has their three. They do have their breach raise and they have their killjoy ults. Yeah. So let's see if they can utilize them to kind of take advantage and maybe go up 4-2 here on Boise State. Absolutely, and this is, I think, why they're considering maybe B-Rush. It is, um, in distance, the shortest rush available, and with that Killjoy ult, it could be huge. I'm surprised they're not pushing more for this ultimate orb. I know it's hard to challenge, but not a lot of teams put more than one member to watch that B-Hallway from Garage. Turret will be taken out. Oh, Boom good Blast will be used there. as well. Yeah, great pack. And the mid will be kind of littered with UBC members as they continue to kind of figure out what they want to do. They could go through sewers to go through A, but uh, haven't made a plan of action just yet. Yeah, and you wonder if you're going to see maybe here as Bandit continues to pick up information over on that site. You wonder as he keeps seeing people, the Lear is going to come out, but there's no one there to see it. You see that Empress ability, he might think might be the time to kind of use it, get aggressive and uh, try and put the foot down. Another shot, Dreammaker picking up another kill as well. And this heaven opportunity is not an angle that uh, has been very lucrative for the side of UBC. Doesn't matter, they're going to continue to push point and they're going to meet the welcoming arms of Bandit. Going to get themselves out of dodge with that ultimate, oh. but no. No ultimate will be used. Neural Theft on two. It's a great call. It would have been more questionable if there were more members, but now that it's a 2v2, they want as much information as possible. Cage will go out, not be able to get anyone in the midst. And here comes Killjoy. entertainment after the plant. This is exactly what we criticized last time we saw this. They're going to go forward and try to get the eliminations before it can be done. The entertainment will be used, but it's not going to be enough as all the members of UBC oh, he got will it off? quickly actually get that. And that will wow. actually get the defuse. And what a fantastic challenge from the Broncos. And yeah, that's kind of the do or die situation. You can play as much as you want. You can keep as many angles held as possible. But what really matters is after that spike is planted, can you recontest? And that was that was so fantastic from your hat there to know where it was going to be and and just know that he had to chow at that moment, and he did. He got the shots off there. Well, how there many seconds are left? Like a millisecond, yeah, actually. Yeah, <laughs> like .0001 with that last shot into <laughs> the containment. So great play from your hat. Great play from your hat. No, Bucky. <gasps> oh, Bucky! <laughs> <laughs> you hit tab as much as we want to, boys. I'm oh, happy with this. And a nice two-piece two coming out. Still holding on to the ultimate, but across the map, the Broncos are a sign of suffering the same casualties that Bandit had given out to the UBC lineup. It's going to be another meeting of the minds, if you will. The Bates jiggles will be huge. Nice smokes, but not enough to be able to block Take out down. the precision of Soldier. And another shot from Lycan. 
You know, we gotta give a lot of credit to, of course, Bandit, but every member of the Broncos is dialed in right now. Yeah, even though that round count shows 4-3, Boise State really does seem like they're hitting their stride. And it kind of feels like it's even more than 4-3, but UBC's done a pretty good job of, once again, hanging with the Broncos yes. and, and taking a lot, taking their opportunities and taking rounds off them when you wouldn't think they would be able to. It's a, it's a huge boon uh, of confidence, and, and not only that, but credit definitely given to go blow for blow with a Bronco squad is always impressive. Yeah, and it... it, it Seeing how good this Broncos side is, and I think a lot of the league knows it. And um, so anytime that you can do that, you know, when you look back, even if you might not win, you can look back and think, yeah, but look at how we started these maps. You know, we didn't just let Boise State just create that chaos that they're so famous for and just run all over us. And, and they're doing a good job of doing that by playing everything a lot slower here. As you can see, now they're starting to push up into mid here. They want this B point just desperately and... You know, as it goes to show, it, it wasn't something they can use before, but now that they have commanding hold oh, over this heaven opportunity, heaven. and it does look like Thick was pushing at the same time, a nice capitalization of someone up there on a roof. Ramparts will be used. It's going to be a nice two for two trade, though. Bandit's going to go for a little bit of action, but gets blinded. Dodges out on the raise. Ultimate goes oh for the my. shot, gets a return, and will be taken out in stride. A quick defeat here for the Broncos as they finally are now again able to tie things up. Yeah, the judge just didn't quite have the range there to find the uh, the Elam. I wonder, I wonder if there's another shotgun that on this patch could have had the range to take care of business don't know. there. I wouldn't know it. I don't get this. I don't see it. It's <laughs> not here. I don't think there's. I don't think there's anything. Yeah, you, know, you could go for the shorty, I guess. <laughs> That's a great gun. That's actually probably one of the only guns I uh, only shotguns I don't agree with. Really? I just two. Come on. <laughs> If it had quicker reload, maybe, you know? Yeah. But at that point, it would be balanced. But I think at that point, I mean, they, it is it is in those first How? Early's. Wait, what just? How? how? Why did, first of all, how did that happen? Second of all, <laughs> why challenge Bandit at all? I, I wasn't even, like, ready for that to occur. I didn't think you would think you wall bang through there, to be honest. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is ridiculous. That's, that is pure map knowledge. Pure map knowledge from Bandit. I like this. Holding ropes is always such a questionable thing because it puts you in such a vulnerable spot. But again, you know, confidence be begets confidence. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter how much confidence you have. Saucy will pick up one on, of course, your hat. It's your hood, technically, because he's playing Omen, but who cares? That is, uh, I do believe, some uh, interesting uh, popping of some, some moves here. Going to push forward and actually instantaneously getting taken out. And it looks like UBC has finally clicked things together. The oh. resurrection with the push Woo! forward. I'm the fragger now. And uh, yeah, you use the ultimate and get two pips right back. That's pretty good. That was impressive. He didn't even need to hit the res if he didn't want to. I mean, it, it saves thing, a little bit though, of right? eco, but huh? Here, here's the thing. I think the res was a bait. You see time and time again, people are like, I got my res, it's okay. And like, the person that got eliminated is in such a poor position that the res almost gives a free elimination back. But he instead goes for the res, walks out in front, gets the shots before the res animation can complete. And uh, that completely, I think, caught UBC off guard. Mm. That, that, that is just I, next level I criticize thinking. the use of this wall. There are so many other better points to use this wall. But most of them are attacker favored. We'll have to see if that's something that we can uh, enjoy. Uh, most of it does give credit to, uh, you know, a shotgun sage, but uh, I think it was it. bait that time though, because most of the time we've seen the Jit soldier when he places that wall, he backs up into heaven. His dream maker does find one there, but this time he's he's pushed out over into these ropes area. So I think that was almost a little bit of a bait play from him. As finally a section gets destroyed, it that's been something that we haven't seen very often. The paint shells come out, do a little bit of damage there on the legit soldier, and he's gonna try and find oh one in ropes, my and he does. Goodness. Just a cheeky angle. More map knowledge from Boise State. Great shots from Bandit. The Sheriff is going to come out. He's used his own gun against him there. That's uh, that's frustrating if you're Bandit. And the spike is going to go down, but it's a 1v3 here for the Omen from UBC. 
Good teleport out, but does he want to contest here from Garage? It's a bit of a questionable play. Smoke will come out. The Broncos are going to fall down from Ramparts. They don't want to stick up there to get easily eliminated. You're going to Cypher will dodge out, but unfortunately, finally succumb to the power of the Sheriff. Here comes more information. Denial. Slow Orb will come out. They're going to go for the defuse. The paranoia was going to be enough, but not unfortunately for the likes of the Broncos. Soldier picking up another one. He's, he's going to be like a few pips away. He might be the best fragging Sage that I've seen. Have you seen Shotgun Sage? That's true. Well, no, but like, I just mean the way that he's playing right now. I mean, Shotgun Sage is disgusting. That's, I think that's the main proponent of why my favorite gun's being nerfed. People like that, you know? Yeah. Oh, well. Someone hit tab for me. I need to see if there's any sh any uh, any boys, any buckies. <gasps> thank you. It's almost like they hurt me. <laughs> I don't know how I did that, but thank you. The tailwind forward. Looks like they want to do another one of these A rushes like they did the first round. It will be something they can benefit from. The blind will last a mere second. Your hat's in position. He actually gets oh. one in the trade, though, is what they call for. Knives will come out. Not going to be able to get anything here. Information and damage will be given throughout everyone's arsenal. Spike will be planted, and now they hold a commanding lead on this A point. Another one will suffer casualties, but this time it'll be Lycan who will be see seeing the spectator screen. This is my favorite point of the game when you, uh, you're you the only one alive and you have your entire team just screaming different things at you to do. <laughs> Backseat gaming is the worst thing to happen to this game, but it's not gonna be enough. Oh. They actually don't need to tell Dream Maker oh. what to do. The ultimate's gonna come out and he picks up a third piece. That was such a smart play. There's only a one versus three. They able to find one, but they are able to take it out. No, they aren't. It's gonna be a 1v1 situation. Raise versus raise ult. I think he got it down to half, didn't he? He got it down to half. Woo! He has enough time to defuse. Oh, yeah, he's good. That was that was such a nice four from Dream there. Wow, to go one, piece. two, have the confidence to pop the showstopper, find the Elim, and then just know exactly where they're going to be coming from to find the fourth. Yeah, that was fantastic Beautiful. from Dream. And it, again, it's just agent knowledge as well, right? You you expended your full clip getting a two-piece. You know the reload animation is too quick or too slow for you to kind of push forward with a reload and then attempt. Giving your opponent too much time could be the detriment. So they pull out the ultimate, get the instant kill, then reload and then contest the point. And then, yeah, you know, with the 2v1, uh, you have to give a lot of credit to the remaining team member there that was available for Dream Maker getting that final raise down to 50% HP. Yeah, I think it was Bandit, and he kind of did a double take there as he was checking his corners and kind of flicked to find one shot in. It wasn't enough to get the get the Elon, but you're right. That was critical. And what? Once again, once again, why, why challenge, Bandit? challenge Bandit? This hasn't worked before. They're always going to post Bandit here. Dude, it's, it's so interesting, and people don't realize that there's, like, angle assignments. There's position assignments that uses attainment. It will last for a certain amount of time. It's probably protected for once. But it doesn't matter because you're putting yourself in a position Ooh. where you can't capitalize on it. Almost an, a flawless here from the side of the Broncos. But sheesh, I what's going on here? That was that was a. Uh, I mean, that it started off. I think at one point it was three-one. So I think Boise State just went on like a seven-to-one run of just dominating rounds. Can we get some sheeshes in the chat, please. <laughs> sheesh. Sheesh. Goes there. I, again, like. This is something that, I mean, it, flexibility within a roster is great, but when it comes down to it, you're given a role, you're given an assignment, and you're going to stick to it. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank respect. you, Busy3 with the sheesh. Respect. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've, uh, we've flipped sides, and this is a, this is a question mark in the, in the roster, right? We now see the opportunity for attack cipher. To, to prove useful. Camera's great on these kind of A contests when it comes down to information because you put yourself in such an exposed position trying to challenge with your body. Oh my gosh, there's going to be somebody who's going to run into the grenade, going to be taken out from that utility with the frenzy on top of it. That was that was not just attack cipher, that was aggro cipher. Yeah, that's aggro cipher. Blinded will be met with the headshot as well. Two re Wow, in the blink of an eye, it's now three versus three. Members will be dropping. What's that song about bodies dropping to the floor? I think it's the theme song for this round. <laughs> the Broncos immediately going to go for an, an instant plant. And this is what this is the question mark that we have to make now. What differences are there going to be between how the Broncos hold the recontest and how does UBC approach the recontest? Yeah, if you're Boise State, you just have to... You've got it down. You're in a, you're in a favorable situation. You've got more HP overall than... 
thin UBC. There's no reason to push out here, and you got the info. <laughs> there's, there's Soja with the classic, and your hat with a ghost. But that's a, a you know what? That's now. a great two piece. Oh and wow! Actually, do it in time. Holy cow! That was um, that was a very impressive three yeah. from Kildra there. Yeah, that's a, a silver, and uh, again, we question the use. <gasps> wow, they actually have the knife that's $35. <laughs> Coolest knife, though, honestly. It's so reminiscent of the energy sword from that of Halo. Just use that as a weapon. That is why, true. Why can't in a game like this melee be a... Uh, <gasps> Bucky! Sorry. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I missed, like... Probably 30 seconds of that last round because I was just laughing about your about your about your theme song <laughs> joke. That was that was great. That so, was great. You, hey man. you always have some. So, joke sometimes I got a zinger prepared. It's just up your sleeve and I love it. I love it. Comes comes with years of screaming at things actually. <laughs> I gotta focus on this one. I can't miss more from laughing. I got you, dude. Do what you gotta do. <laughs> Looks like it's gonna be an interesting full send here for the side of B. From that, of course, the B Broncos. Oh, they, uh, there they you go. They are all crouching. Uh, I like this move. Makes it so headshots are not as accessible. Grenade not going to be able to actually gets it on the other side of that wall. Here wow. comes the stage wall. And instant action will be pressed forward. And in the addition of the smoke, one trade will oh. be given over. But immediately the dust settles and UBC is poised to strike. Making it a 2v2, though, doesn't mean that they're equipped for this combat. Mortal or not, they're going to push forward. The spike has been planted. And it, no, will be planted, has been picked up. Spike will be planted, and the uh, turret will be given up in heaven. They know that it's nearby, but again, this Shadow angle is not one that they really need to worry about. This uh, sage wall will continue to persist for a bit longer. They're going to get over the wall and be trades, met with nothing but trades. sprays of bullets from everywhere. A 1v1 will be the final period or punctuation mark, and they actually make it your hat with the headshot. He only needs to aim for the hats, and he'll be fine. Picks up a gun. You know, I like this skin. I'll take it home with me. You know, maybe that's your hat doesn't mean his hat. It means he's aiming, aiming at, at your, your hat. hat. Exactly. Ah, okay. I'm sorry for the slander, your hat. I understand your name now. And wow, that, I mean, the start of that round was, that looked like the start of like a Call of Duty hard point. That, was a, that was a professional football play. They got those X's and O's going all across the map. The coach has written down the play in the playbook, and they just went into to motion. It was kind of a thing of beauty. The Unfortunately, of two of them then almost immediately dropped. The amount of utilities used just smokes, packs, walls, everything. Just going crazy. I wonder if. Hmm. Uh, I'll wait till a dull moment. I don't think something's going to be dull for a while here. Not with Challenge through stage. ramps. Here comes the alarm bot as well. The boom bot. Happy face or not. Headshots will be given another. Bandit is going to get for the full heal. The overheal as well will be huge for them. Another trade on the backside will make it one for two. And we see another concussive set of emotions coming out from this breach. But that is all we'll see of them. And they will be met with a dirt nap here for the remainder of the round. <laughs> Health for both sides actually favors UBC. So it's going to be up to Superior Gunplay, and that's exactly what that's going to be brought to the table. As Bandit again, in addition to a four-piece, actually. Bandit says, I'm sorry, Soldier, did you want top of the leaderboard? I'm going to take that back right quick. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty impressive. Bandit is doing his thing, using that overhill just to Eye on uh, sword, pog champ. True. <laughs> if only it wasn't $35. Okay, quick, before things happen. Yes. What if they made a character whose abilities were to expedite the cooldown of other other agents Ooh, like as a support type like situation? a support oh. type doesn't support in terms of health but gives you like an extra ability charge or something with their ultimate now, so you got to stop because now riot's going to steal you from us and we need you here casting not creating all these great characters i, I would love to work for riot riot please hire me <laughs> <laughs> he could do it too he's, he's i got, got a got lot of ideas another boom blast to the side Interesting utility use, trying to get to the other side of the boxes. And this is kind of where one of the fantastic attack stage walls can come into play. We haven't seen it yet, and I doubt we will, but you can actually use it on this box next to the undertow uh, from Garage, and you can crouch peek all of that angle, and they can barely see your tootsies. Wait, what? Yeah, so you can crouch peek a lot of information with the, the amount of height you get from the stage wall, but the fact that crouching gives you some Minor vision is pretty pretty wonderful. Uh, not a lot of people expect people to walk on top of a wall either. You don't want to you don't want to repeat peek it. You want to just continue to keep yourself safe. 
Yeah, you see some of those paint shells doing some damage there. The Sage Heal is going to come through for Bandit, but this is a huge push from Boise State up into this to this Heaven Road Ramparts. Side. Someone's in Stairs as well. Here comes the Met, and the Stairs combatant will actually be the victor. Three versus four, the Broncos. I would prefer maybe a man advantage. The detainment oh, would be given out, and it's going to no. deter a lot of the action. And here comes the ultimate from your hat. He's going to go, oh, maybe to the other side of the world. He does. And this is the bait we like to see. Broncos completely turning tail with mere seconds left on the clock. Gets the spike plan, extending the round. Uh, only downside is a, a, a one, it's 1v3 right now, actually. But he's going to have an opportunity to wit take these gunfights in 1v1s or at least try and take them out while they're, they're trying gonna to They're going to triple push sight. from Air Sport? Uh, this could be huge for your hat. It's going to end up probably working out for them, but in any other situation, it's so uninformed to do a triple push like this. Picks up one, oh. almost picks up two. Scrambles to what target he wanted to go for a second. Gets the spike plant, though, so that's extra cash in the, in the hands. But guys, splitting the thing doesn't work anymore. Never crouch peek. They see you first. But what if you walk across the wall and you say, hey, I'm on a wall? Mm. Mm? Rain mm. Man, do you ever think of that? Yeah, that's uh, this this is this is um, I, I I love I love when the chat starts talking and it, it turns into uh, who can debate. who can outbrain the other one. I'm just saying because you uh, usually win. I I know these people and some of them believed in the the power of the Bucky and some of them were naysayers, but I say to you naysayers, if it was bad, why is it getting nerfed? Mm. Once again, just a, just a question. Philo philosophical questions. We'll call this Valen. a philosophical corner. Still see you first, though. <laughs> Look, you can shoot with your. Wait, what if there's a character that can shoot from their tootsies, from their foot? That's mm -hmm. just too OP. Too That's strong. Just too OP. That's just nuts. Frenzy purchase here from Dream Maker. Not really something we see, but uh, kind of building up to that Ares Omen combo that they're known for. Gonna go for some nice contests. Actually, gonna be shot through the smoke. Nice blast over the wall. That's a judge. Not to get too excited. It is still a shotgun. We'll be met with opposition, but we'll find oh, a two-piece. Actually, a three-piece from the side of Splendor. Shotguns are uh, not fun to play against, and it's going to be a 1v4. And UBC is really turning this around. I mean, despite it being the fact that the Broncos are making proactive plays and UBC is punishing it, they are still holding strong against this continual tide that is the Broncos t Bronco team. Yeah, Boise State at this point, they uh -oh. are, uh, they seem to have just kind of taken their foot off the gas. They're not really getting too crazy with it. You see the disorientation comes through there. They, they've got the idea of where he was, and then that was an easy peek into the corner there. It was really nothing that the Broncos players could do there. Yeah, and it, I, I think that they're Bucky OP, true. That's facts. Thank you. Oh, R.I.P. No longer OP, probably. Although, I'm, I got some math to do later when I get home. I still feel like I'll be the person that goes home and is like, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna just, you know, hop on a little bit of hour before I go to bed and somehow still find a way to get ranged by the Bucky. I mean, it's still going to do damage, absolutely. I think that maybe the M2 is just not as preferred. Just buy a Judge, guys. It's better. Or just don't buy a judge so I don't have to get triggered about playing. True. That, that would be that would be ideal. Nice almost one way here. The only downfall about most of these omen smokes is that they can't be as one way as maybe you'd like, depending on where you place them, but it's okay. I think that's doing to do enough of a job to deter things. Information will be given. You can stream on a little bit of a a rotation here, it yeah. looks like. He wants to check whether or not the full squad, I think, of UBC are available for defending here. If in need of counter rotation, they're oh, actually maybe looking for a flank. And they they have premonition as to where it's at. It might be a little bit too far away to help most of the squad, but this is an unknown flank. Ooh. No damage, no opportunity to see who's there. They still somehow managed to eke out a trade, but... Uh, very interesting one at that. Silver and going to be dangerously low as well. Going to collapse on the rest of the Bronco squad, and they're down here on point. It's just the solitary Sage does have ultimate, but has no one available to resurrect. And the spike has been planted. It's going to be a like a 1.2 out of out of five. It's going to be up to just the Silver and with minimal Whoa. health, will be met with the final spray of bullets, and that will take it out of the Broncos, putting themselves close to match point. Okay, so so here's so here's my suggestion. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. thought of this. Yeah, okay. what's up? What if, if you were, if you have your Sage and yeah, yeah. you don't have anyone by you and you have your ultimate, 
What if you can set a respawn point to respawn yourself if you're the last one? So you're like a better phoenix. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're exactly. Act you're actually just a better phoenix at that point. Your wall's better. The slow is better than uh, the hot hands. I mean, the the blind is cool, I guess. But the fact to have a self heal, the fact that she has a self heal, yeah, that's I think no, eliminates true. the opportunity to self res. Probably, but I mean, it would be pretty sweet. If she was not able to self heal and can self res, I think that's justified. One or the other, not both. Nice shot here. And that, I do believe, will be something to start something beautiful here from the side of Bandit as well. Picking up a, a Sheriff is kind of iconic. A wall bang from Bandit as well will be met with a nice spray from the Vandal. There's going to be a headshot. The raise v raise is always as fun for everybody. Nice resurrection, though. Bandit going to pick up a third one. Going to look for an opportunity for an ace. And I don't know. Sometimes teams are willing to give the, the giant spotlight to that ace giver, but uh, I don't know. Doesn't look like that's the case. They just want to go for the dub, and that's the right call. Going to go for the spike plant. They have a premonition as to where the uh, omen is, and they find him, take him out, and that is a flawless kind of. Like a kind flaw, uh, flaw, uh, point 0.5 flawless. 0.75. You got me. Point, I'll give Resurrect him a, a dead member is a dead member, okay? Yeah, but there is no dead member. I mean, he, he, he was there a zombie. Resurrected. What if instead, what if instead Sage could resurrect herself, but with like decaying health? So you only last for a certain amount of time. Ooh, okay, okay. I see what you're saying here. But what if it was just like back in spawn? You just had to go. You just back go all the way back to spawn <laughs> with no guns, with no bi phase. Just, just, just a classic. Just a knife. Just, just, just a knife. A knife? Just, I don't think just, just, no just one would use her. She just the iron done. sword. You know what? Okay. Two. Two ion swords. <laughs> Attack with. That's like the Cali sticks, you know? Yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> don't remind me. I'm focused on Valorant, not on not on getting trolled by those in Warzone. You see Boise State's pushing up here into heaven. They are on match point and on game point, actually. The Lear is going to go out, and I think he's going to find one. Bandit's just trying to push into the. Push in here, get aggressive, see if he can find another pick. It's going to be a question of can he get aggressive enough to find this player who's just sitting there with the judge in that corner. It's Jet, and Jet's oh. going to do a do a number on Bandit, but Soja's going to trade it out. So that was a great positioning from Soja, just using Bandit as bait. The trades keep coming oh through. Boise State's got it down to a 2v1. Moogles. The ult came through. The fact that both members of the Boise State squad are almost hive mind in the sense that they ended at the same place, and it's going to be up to the Ooh, solitary breach. He shots. actually wins things out. Kurt, can you prove the fact that this is a great character to have in the roster? You might be able to. Does have Sage left. with the spike. 30 seconds left, and it's going to be something that maybe they said, eh, he'll go B, I swear. He won't be reholding A angle. And oh, he yes. Is. He actually might be going to B. <laughs> watch how quick this man turns around the moment he hears the spikes planted, though. He's gonna Just watch, it, watch the silhouette. He's going to so go for the wall. Oh, my gosh. Wait, Soldier. you just wasted it. Soldier, he, why did you oh. could have locked yourself in the wall in the corner with the spike, buddy? Well, to be fair, trying to put walls in defense against the breach is kind of asking for death, but didn't it matter doesn't matter. It the care shot will come out, <laughs> and Broncos will get the win on the map. They'll get the win for the series. Thank you again for competing. <laughs> it's actually insane how much we we have things that we say about this team where we're like, oh, why didn't you do that? Why, why did you do it this way? To and then fair, it's just like, yeah. oh, by the way, we're just going to win 2-0 in the highest division of <laughs> Collegiate Valor. And it just, yeah, you know. Uh, we would be the ones on the screen if we knew anything about the game, I guess. <laughs> I, yeah, that was, that was pretty ridiculous. Well, speaking of Boise State's eSports, Boise State's eSports is always looking for talented produ players, production, and broadcast talent. Top talent, along with good grades and eligibility, can earn scholarships as well. Sign up today by visiting boisestate.edu backslash esports. Get some more information over there. It's, uh, it's a fantastic experience. It's a team that can provide you with the highest level of experience and the highest level of kind of esports at the collegiate level. You, you kind of get a look into what it's like to be a part of just an elite program. Um, I think it says on that website to be the Alabama of esports is our goal. And I, I would say we, have, we are definitely fast approaching that goal. We're somewhere on the map uh, of that, that path, I guess. I'm over here now. <laughs> <laughs> I, li I like this camera angle. This is cool. Well, <laughs> you know, as we kind of look to close up this. Where, where uh, am I supposed to look, though? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs>
<laughs> As we look to close up the series as Boise State takes the 2-0 win over UBC Okanagan, what are some final thoughts? What, what, what's your reaction to Boise State going to, I think, 7-1 and one now in the Champions Division? It, it shows that the fact that they have preparation uh, and they have, they've prepared things in a way that's very successful to them. We don't see a lot of typical things, and it's okay. Oh. I'm going to go home now. Oh, production. All you right. are the best. I'm going to find out who made this. There's a pretty little Torbjorn hammer right here. <laughs> And you are going to quickly become best friends with it. Let me. This will soon be your. I don't even know. You will pay penance with by the force of Torbjorn Hammer. Let's see. I had a train of thought. My emotions are taking over. There may be green in my skin. <laughs> emerging through sheer rage. See, I always thought of that. Like, when I first saw that, the first thing I thought of, like, was, oh, that's a great prop for Valorant because it's like, oh, I, you know, like a judge's gavel. A judge. Yeah. That's, that, is, that is representation of how the world of Valorant shotguns is moving. Into the judge. Just make a new shotgun and let that one be OP. That's a question. They're balancing all these agents, right? Will they ever introduce new guns? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe. Need a grenade yeah. launcher. Make me a flamethrower <laughs> and I'll play that game incessantly. Yeah, I don't I don't know about that, but uh what I do I know should cast with this. They went over here. Oh my gosh, they slammed down with the big move. <laughs> and they went da, 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 da. Actually it'll be like this. Do, 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 do. I this love it. This looks like a ghost actually. I love do, it. Do, 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 He's do. He's just creating guns in real life from Valorant. This is this is hilarious. My mental's broken. I'm so sad right now. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Well, what is not sad is I believe we get to witness <gasps> our player of the game. Number one. Number one. Who do you think who who's gonna be our player of the game tonight? Oh come on, man. It's the Bucky. The Bucky? Wait, no. I, that's why you asked my the vote. Player of you the asked game. my vote, and that's my vote. Okay. Okay. So we, we've, we've got we've got your we've got your weapon of the game. What's your what's your player of the game now? Come on, non Bucky, dude. non Bucky. It's gonna be Bandit. You think it's gonna be Bandit? I think it's gonna be Bandito. I yeah, Bandit, Bandito, whatever you want to call him. He did absolutely pop off. He had a ridiculous map one, and I, what did he go at map two? I think he still was pretty nice, wasn't he? I think for the end of the day, it was like fifty plus, which is not something to laugh at at all. <gasps> we actually get to find is out. It? Drum roll. Bucky. It is Bandito. Hey, okay. Mr. Ethan Cobb, our player of the game. And you see here, there's some footage from map one where he is just kind of going crazy. I just dropped myself down in my chair there. I got so excited. That was, uh, <laughs> I, hit, I hit the lever that, you know, sinks you down. That's going to be funny. I'll have to go back and watch that tonight. Yeah, you see <laughs> Bandito taking care of business all around. He had clips with everything tonight. I mean, he had he some the Bucky. With the Vandal. Did he have clip? This was ridiculous. This yeah, was I don't just absolutely how this works. Not fair. Not okay. Uses a sheriff to the extent of an operator. Uses a Bucky, which is the best gun, or was. Rest in peace. There's and the then Specter clips again, just continuing to show just straight dominance. And you know, when it comes down to it, a lot of the success from the Broncos can be uh, paved. At least the way to success can be paved by gunplay. Um, and this is why the the teams that give us the most challenge are very few. Uh, because they meet us in that high mm -hmm. capacity and high echelon of game gunplay, which uh, doesn't happen very often. Yeah, I agree. And and I think it just comes from the fact that most teams have a couple of players who can just go crazy. Boise State has like four or five players that at any given moment can just pop off. Mm -hmm. So, I, and I have a sneaking suspicion because I was waiting to see some of those operator plays come through there when when we were seeing bandit and his and his player of the game i have a sneaking suspicion that uh yeah that's probably going to be some stuff that's in our top five which we will have coming up for you here in if, a second if i don't see the uh the double op kill swap to oh. the spot swap to the phantom reload for the final kill play i might be a little mad that was unbelievable that I'd was actually insane mm -hmm. and that's just kind of what you can com come to expect guys i mean look at this come follow us on twitter at Twitter, at uh, uh, Boise City Sports, to follow and know when we're going live. You can see me here. You can see me get frustrated and flustered and depressed. The whole range of emotions so you don't have to experience them. That's true. That's true. And you get to see awesome memes like RIP to the Bucky. Rip Bucky. Rip, <laughs> rip Bucky. Well, 
hey, thanks for tuning in tonight. We did get to watch some fantastic Valorant as Boise State takes the 2-0 win over UBC Okanagan. We are going to have top five plays, so stick around for that. But for Baratel, I am Nappy Season. Have a fantastic evening. Bonk. Columbia, Okanagan, this is good practice for me. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are you looking for out of this Boise State team? You know, what are, what are you looking for to see them really take control of this early? And, <laughs> and can he find another one? It's Bandit. Oh, he can't. So Dreammaker does find a trade, though, with that customary LMG that we have to see him run at least once a map. It's got to be the Aries. That's the, that's the value second round buy. Unfortunately, you're going to walk into the waiting arms of, of course, that high capacity LMG, and uh, it's, uh, you're not long for the... It's your hood, technically, because he's playing Omen, but who cares? That is, uh, I do believe, some uh, interesting uh, popping of some, some moves here. Going to push forward and actually instantaneously getting taken out. And it looks like UBC is trying to click things together. The oh. resurrection with the push Ooh. forward. I'm the fragger now. And uh, yeah, use the ultimate and get some violence there. The frenzy does pick up the kill for Boise State. And then you see there's the specter. Some of the buys starting to come through. That's the advantage of winning that first round. Nice retreat into the portal for safety. I wonder if they loop around for a recontest. I think they oh, have the supremacy, bang. especially with that challenge from showers. I mean, get the ultimate or They want as much information as possible. Cage will go out, not be able to get anyone in the midst. And here comes Kill entertainment joy. after the plant. This is exactly what we criticized last time we saw this. They're gonna go forward and try to get the eliminations before it can be done. The tainment will be used, but it's not going to be enough as all the members of UBC oh, we got will it quickly actually get that. And that wow. will actually get the deep. <laughs> Dude, backseat <laughs> gaming is the worst thing to happen to this game, but it's not going to be enough. Oh. They actually don't need to tell Dreammaker oh. what to do. The ultimate's going to come out, and he picks up a third piece. That was such a smart play. There's only a one versus three. They able to find one, but they are able to take it out. No, they aren't. It's going to be a 1v1 situation. Raise versus raise ult. I think he got it down to half, didn't he? He got it down to half. Woo! 